Hello and welcome, this is Cryptos Chain with simple cryptocurrency news and in today's news video I'm going to be talking about the five countries that are going big on cryptocurrency adoption. Then I'll be talking about the Canadian bans on trading, okay? Well, certain trading, of course. We'll get into that when we get to it. Then I'm going to be covering news from the ontology ecosystem and finally I'm going to wrap it up with news from the NEO ecosystem as I always do. Now before I get into the news I just want to remind you that in the description below this video you will find the times as well as the links to the different topics which I'm going to be discussing in this video so you can simply click on the time and it will take you directly to the topic. That being said, let's get right in. So, as we can see on Chepicap.com, five countries that are going big on cryptocurrency adoption. So, actually, here in this article, they're just trying to tell us that some of these countries are helping adopt cryptocurrency and not only helping adopt it but also trying to attract companies to invest in them of course because that's going to increase their income, it's going to increase the GDP and things like that. So Number one in the list, we've got Malta. As we know, it's also known as the blockchain island. So last year, the Maltese parliament passed three cryptocurrency and blockchain bills that provide investors with a clear description of the required legal framework to set up a legitimate cryptocurrency business, which has ever since attracted many crypto businesses to set up their offices in the country. So we know that offices like Binance, for example, they've got, they're in Malta as well. I don't believe it's their head office but they definitely have an office over there. I'm not sure if it's customer support or uh, which department exactly, but they have an office over there. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of ICOs are also trying to move to uh, to Malta to, to open up their businesses and start it up because obviously taxes are very small over there. A lot of gaming companies are over there too. So that explains the reason why, right? Now, Singapore is number two. So, of course, Singapore actually uh, was one of the most favorable countries for ICOs last year and even recorded more ICOs than in the US in August 2018. Many Korean companies actually went to Singapore as well to open up their ICOs. Now, number three, we've got Switzerland. And actually, Switzerland doesn't come as a surprise, but it's mostly uh, financial institutions or banking institutions that have tried to adopt crypto related services okay uh, companies such as falcon private bank uh, they've introduced new crypto related functionalities to its customers while swiss code banking group has announced their plan to launch a crypto custody solutions next march and uh, also in the stocks market the swiss, swiss stock exchange has listed bitcoin and, ex and ethereum uh, ETP with XRP ETP and which will be offered very soon. So uh, yeah, now Gibraltar number four. So even though Gibraltar is very small, the Gibraltar Financial Services Commission introduced a regulatory framework for companies that use digital ledger technology, such as but not limited to crypto exchanges, crypto wallets and crypto payment services and token issuers. So basically they're trying to do the same as um, as Malta, right, they're trying to attract ICOs to invest in Gibraltar because of the low um, corporation tax. And also they're saying here that the country launched Gibraltar Blockchain Exchange, which made the trading of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum available to the public following the approval from the local financial authorities. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, finally, we've got Argentina. Argentina has proven an incredible breeding ground for cryptocurrency adoption as of late, with a recent slew of bullish sentiment priming the country to become a pioneer in crypto mass adoption. Thanks to the partnership back in February between Bitix, a blockchain-based financial services provider, a platform to top up Argentinian transport card citizens were allowed to pay for the travel using BTC. So that's mass adoption right there, right? We're, we're actually seeing, well, not mass adoption, but a, a small a startup, right? It's starting up. Uh, we have seen it in Venezuela as well with uh, with the Petrocoin, right? Uh, we've actually done some video some time ago with uh, two ladies going to pay for a burger using the Dash crypto coin. So, you know, uh, it's starting. It's starting. We just got to accept it, right? I think I think once once everyone starts using a specific cryptocurrency and all the prices are in that specific cryptocurrency, for example, let's say you want to pay your rent in that, you want to pay... Uh, for shopping in that specific cryptocurrency, then it would be different, right? Because obviously people don't want to receive their salaries in cryptocurrencies, but having to pay their rent in fiat because because of the volatility, obviously, right? Whereas if you have a set fixed price in, say, Bitcoin, let's say your rent is 0 0.5 Bitcoin and you receive your salary of, let's say, I don't know, 2 Bitcoin, 
right then obviously you don't care about the volatility because your rent is fixed at a specific fraction of a bitcoin so it doesn't matter if it goes up or down in price obviously your rent will also go up, up and down in price right so it will not affect you financially but uh, the way things are at the moment it just doesn't seem to work out so let's see if argentina can uh, can make this happen first that being said, let's talk about Quadriga. So I've got Quadriga CX scandal effects, but actually this news aren't specifically about Quadriga, but more about the effects of the Quadriga CX scandal in which the CEO actually died and people lost their funds because they can't find the, the, the hardware wallet where, or the cold storage where the cryptocurrencies were stored. So because of that, Canada proposes a ban on cryptocurrency short selling and margin trading. Okay, so they're not banning cryptocurrency trading altogether but just short selling and margin trading so here they're actually saying that to reduce the risks of potentially uh, manipulative or deceptive activities in the near term we propose that platforms not permit dark trading or short selling activities or extend margin to their participants and uh, yeah obviously here there's more news on that so you may want to look into that if you're interested so yeah that's probably going to affect traders right uh, okay, that being said, let's talk about ontology. So we don't have too many news about ontology recently, just that uh, ONG is now available for limitless non-custodial swaps with more than 160 cryptos on changenow.io, which is an account free, worry-free, and faster than light, they're saying. So yeah, you can basically swap ONG. Now, this is good because we, we didn't actually see ONG being uh, available in too many exchanges or too many um, wallets, right? Uh, there weren't that many possibilities to get into ONG. You're pretty limited to Bbox. Now, obviously, Bbox is not the only one. It's also on Binance. So ONG is becoming widely available and the liquidity is being spread. So that does actually help because ONG is the fuel of ontology for those of you that don't know. So that's pretty cool, right? That being said, let's talk about the NEO ecosystem. So actually, we've got a recap of the NEO GameCon in Akihibara, Tokyo. So they went to Japan. Uh, this was on March 9th and March 10th. They had an inaugural NEO GameCon in Tokyo and the conference was NEO's first gaming focused event which attracted more than 1500 attendees over the last two over the two days. Speakers included the NEO leadership such as Da Hong Fei, Ring Zhang and Johnson Wu Zhou. Celebrities such as Pop Ground such as Pop Group 9 and TV show hosts ecosystem projects such as O3, Magic Cube, and Neoland. So yeah, O3 were there as well. You guys know that I always cover any any features that O3 release. They're actually a great wallet. I do recommend it. Obviously, if you store your Neo on there, um, you don't actually store it. Just, just to be clear, you don't actually store your Neo and Ontology on O3, but you can access it using the O3 wallet, which is very user-friendly and the design is really cool. So basically, on day one, they were just talking about uh, PC... Um, digital digital uh, gaming and software distribution and things like that how people are shifting from pcs and uh, they're shifting from consoles and pcs to mobile devices when the best game can be played with your mobile phone everyone will play the game that's what da hong fei said and further on they were actually um, talking about games such as crypto kitties crypto countries things like that and the gaming industry the blockchain gaming industry and then he made an interesting statement saying that blockchain games may not be the future of the blockchain but the games that use the blockchain technology will be the future of games and then they started talking about crypto fast and they had a presentation on crypto fast which is a new racing game that is built using the neo technology so not necessarily on the blockchain it's just using the neo technology so actually this crypto fast game is a simulation car racing games a racing game where players can purchase customize and race cars in tournaments in addition developers will be able to contribute content to the game by designing cars race trucks and other game modes new additions to the game will need to be voted by token holders and revenue is distributed amongst content creators so actually uh, if we play this short clip here this is in chinese but obviously now this is just the clip right that i've gotten to just so i can show you how this game actually looks because the design is pretty awesome Right, so this is from the Neo Smart Economy YouTube page. So let's play it.
So yeah, as you've seen, I mean, this is kind of like Gran Turismo, if you remember the classic game. Um, the, the graphics are really awesome, really cool, and yeah, it's using the new technology, right? So yeah, that being said, let's talk about the final use from the NEO ecosystem, and that's introduction to the next NEO development community. So what is the next, right? So next is actually a China-based development community which hopes to become the largest NEO community for DAP incubation. The group is also running a NEO DAP competition which aims to promote the innovation of blockchain applications. Next developers are responsible for several projects in the NEO ecosystem including Xchain, which is Intelligent Identity Network and Endorset Decentralized Content Ecosystem with the Blawless Block Explorer and the wallet application actually i want to talk about the blawless block explorer i actually use this block explorer to check the neo assets nep5 tokens that you've got uh, because this is actually working properly right we know that uh, for example neo scan didn't really work too well right neo tracker didn't work too well so actually blowlist works really well it syncs pretty fast uh, with the neo blocks so do check this out if you're interested to find out about your token assets. Again, you've got the NEO Economy website as well by Vincent from NEO News Today, uh, where you can check your portfolio and how much it's worth. But again, Blowlist for a quick checkup of your address, just check it out and, and have a look. And the, yeah, basically the next community, which started in 2017, is actually a merger of two separate project teams, which is former known as Xchain. And uh, basically they're saying that uh, They've created a decentralized resume asset management tool, which is comparable to LinkedIn. And the second team was working on Endorset, which is the open content platform that aims to compete with Twitter and Steemit, amongst other similar platforms. Uh, now, we haven't heard much from Endorset, to be fair, because uh, I have covered them in a previous video a long, long time ago, like a good few months ago, uh, and we haven't heard much progress from them, to be honest. So. Let's see what they do. They actually did an airdrop back then as well. I think it was summer of 2018. Uh, so yeah, the newly formed Next community had as a strong direction in mind for these projects. However, the team was small and required more developers. So they reached out and invited volunteers. And actually there are 26 team members at the moment. And uh, these, these members, this community is actually funded by Neo Global Development and Neo Global Capital with 1 million Chinese yen, which actually equates to $150,000. So that's their funding to start working on some dApps. And uh, the Neo DAP competition as well. They've had the Blockchain Application Development Challenge. So, uh, yeah, let's see what are the projects that they've got at the moment. So they've got iWallet and Blowlist. And next is currently developing a Chrome extension known as NeoLine. This extension is intended to act as a Neo equivalent to the popular Ethereum-based browser called a uh, wallet called MetaMask, allowing users to accept dApps in a secure manner directly from their browser. Actually, this is pretty similar to O3 if you think about it, right? Because uh, you can use the O3 wallet to access the dApps as well, but obviously they want to create something on the side. But yeah, we are actually seeing a lot of movement now from NEO. Uh, we had NEO, uh, NEO Amazon, I believe it was called, for Latin America. Now we've got uh, Next for, for China. So quite a lot of development communities for the NEO ecosystem are popping up and they're going to help promote NEO. They're going to create dApps on NEO. And I think the more dApps are on NEO, the more chances it has of growing, obviously, because it's going to expand. There's going to be more use cases. And uh, also, you know, they're preparing for 2020 because that's what Da Hong Fei said. So we might see when we see Neo 3.0, when we see the fast transactions per second, then uh, things may change for Neo, right? I don't know if we really need the fast transactions per second, but we definitely definitely need to fix the the clogging problem that they've got at the moment when uh, when congestion happens on their blockchain, and you're stuck waiting for unconfirmed transactions to get confirmed. So yes, that's pretty much it for the news for today. Not that much covered. Obviously, we don't have that many news, but I've tried to cover the main uh, important aspects. But so yes, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. Again, if you're new to my channel, I'd appreciate a subscribe. Do like the video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment below if you have any sort of questions. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.